All right, so how's everybody doing out there? So what we're doing is we're working on our GTO. Now I got the firewall all uh, stripped down. We took the steering column out because we're probably going to end up putting a tilt steering wheel in this thing. And uh, Manny got the uh, dash. You got some stuff off. What did you get off? Just the glove box. Okay, you took the glove box off and what else? The, you got the wipers off? Yep. Stuff like that? Yep, just a little thing. Okay, so stuff. what we're in the process now is I got to get these doors off. And let me tell you something about these 67, 66, 67 details. It's got screws. Okay, can you see those screws in there? You see that? Yep. Um, you got these screws on the bottom here. I don't know why they did it like that, but it's got screws. And the only way to get those screws out when it's uh, when they're in, been in there for 60 years is you got to take a cutting torch and heat the head up. So that's what I had to do there, and I'm going to show you that over here. Um, but we're going to get this door off. I got one more screw in there. And then once we get this door off, then we go to that door. Okay, so another problem that you have on these cars is getting these bolts off on a top. You got to use a ratchet wrench to do that. So we're going to go ahead, if maybe the body shop girl, and hold that. I'll get this bolt off. Now, is the jack under there nice and yeah. level? Okay, let me get this last bolt out. If you can hold that there. Okay, you're going to see that. Go over on that side and just hold the door. I am holding the door. Okay, don't let it fall, okay? I am holding the door. What do I think about this car? Let me tell you what I think about this car. I think this car is a beautiful car. I think it's a restorable car. Um, it's a California rust-free car. Uh, somebody already did some work to it. And the car looks like it's in good shape. Type car. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it should all work out if I can get this big long pole off of here. It comes. Okay, now hold that right there. Uh, one thing you want to do when you're restoring a car, I'm sure I've been over this with you before, is bag and tag. We do not want to lose these bolts and these screws to this car. We do not want to do that. Very important on something like this. So we're going to go ahead and if you can move your feet, Let's go ahead and get the door off and we'll just kind of lean it over there for right now. Let me get up. Hang on. And for anybody that doesn't know, I just had a total knee replacement on my knee. And it hurts like hell. So, there you go. Move the jack. Move the jack. Move the jack out of the way, please. Thank you. Right here, just for now. Okay. Alright, so we're over here on this side of the car now. And what we got to do is the body shop girl, Minnie, if you can come up here with it, I'd appreciate it up on top. Okay, can you hand me that flashlight over there, please? I need the flashlight. You got the striker in there? Yes, I got everything. Okay, so we got camera girl back on the camera there. So can you see what we're looking at here? Yep. Camera Girl Mini. Do you yep. see those? Okay, so we got screws on the bottom of this door. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take those screws off. And they've been on there for like 60 years. Okay, whatever, you know, go back to 1967. So the way to do this is you got to take a torch. And then you got to get the strike. You got to go like that. And then once you get that done, you need and then this tool right here, can you see that tool? Yep. Alright, that's a giant jumbo screwdriver. And then what we're going to do, we're going to heat the head of the screw up. So I'm going to take this and watch real close. I just want to heat the head up to where it's cherry red. That's all, well it's not red yet, hang on. You got to get the cherry red. Okay, that one's red. Can you see that mini? Yep. Okay, let's get this one here. Cherry red. There it is. And then there's one way back in here. There it is right there. And if you don't heat these up, you will never get them off. It, it's going to be highly unlikely, highly unlikely that you'll ever get them off. So by using your heat... All right, so now that they're heated up, let's get that one more time. We're going to turn that off just like that. Okay, so that's done. We don't need this anymore for right now. And then what we do is we take this, and then 
as we pulled down on it. Being oh so careful. And we all so careful. I was just gonna say, Minnie. Just set the magic down. See how easy it comes off? Just like butter. Did you see that? So, we don't want to touch that screw. Right now, the only objective that we have is we have got to get that screw loose. That's without our main. Touching it. Yeah, without touching it. So, our main objective is to get it loose without burning our hand. See there? And we got to do that before it cools down. And the problem that you have doing this is when they put these on they had special tools at the factory so your screwdriver might not line up okay see how loose that is now yep. if I wouldn't have heated that up that would have never came off okay so I'm gonna let those cool down for about 10 or 15 minutes so I can touch them and then the way that I do it is I got this little screwdriver here which I can get in here with my hand and loosen it off and then actually you're gonna freak out I use this little snap-on tool that has a screwdriver bit on it and it just happens to fit inside there where it'll actually make it turn but the only thing that's going to make it easy is by heating up the door that's basically how you do it all right while we're waiting for that to cool down this is an off-frame restoration people i'm not putting it on a rotisserie somebody's already done the metal work on the bottom it's already a done deal but uh we got the firewall stripped I don't know if the owner's going to put air conditioning in the car or not, uh, but we'll get to that later. Um, we've taken off the master cylinder, steering column, we took the throttle cable off. Uh, the clutch will be coming out of it. We're going to put a hydraulic clutch in it, system. And we got to take it over to Sandblast guy over here in Moab. He's going to do the firewall, he's going to do the jams, he's going to do underneath the car. And then I want him to, if Minnie can stay right there, look at this. See how that looks kind of rotted there, rusty? Mm -hmm. So we got to get that. And we still got to go up into the attic and get some parts. So we stripped this car by hand. This is what you're looking at. It's bare metal up on the roof. It looks like there's rust. That's not rust. That's actually red primer. And I'm going to DA sand that off. But this has been stripped by hand. And what we did is we kept the electroplated, factory electroplate, coating on the car by doing that. That's very important. Um, if you're restoring an old classic car, you can see me touching it. When, when did we do this? Like, what, a month and a half ago? It's been a while. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, it's not going to rust. It's not going to rot out. We're not going to get surface rust from moisture. We're not going to get anything like that because I did it by hand, chemical stripped it, and it's going to come out right. Now, I didn't want to chemically strip the jams, so we're going to like I said, we're going to blast these jams right here. That'll be blasted. And then he's going to get inside here while he's at it. So i got to get these off. We'll see you over at the blaster guy's place. And hopefully uh, we're going to get this car done and out of my shop because I'm already sick and tired of looking at it. Did you roll your eyes? Why yes, did you? I did. Well, why? Because. But I'm sick and tired of looking at it already. I want it out. I want it out of my shop. Okay, I want it gone. Okay, I said I wasn't gonna holler and scream today. I'm not gonna. But I'm just letting everybody out there know I want the damn still thing an out of asshole. here. Yeah. I want them out of here. Still an asshole. I want it gone. Still an asshole. Okay, thank you. We'll see y'all later. Take it easy. My friend Pete right here showing you how to do it right. Yeah, see, I told you you're still an asshole. <sighs> see you later. Bye. I got screws to take out. I got screws to take out. Can I go? phone over here with the car let's go ahead and get that action going okay are you there Jimmy guy yes. Yes, okay are we restoring your car over here or are we just you know having vacation bro oh, we're restoring it over there. okay 
bring the camera a little closer. Okay, I got you on film here. I'm just letting you know. So, um, I asked you to send me the fender wells like three weeks ago because I told you we had to get this sandblasted. Now, what's going to happen? I'm going to tell you what's going to happen, okay? Yeah, we're not going to have the fender wells here with the car, so that means I'm going to have to take them over there separate, and he's going to charge us another price. He's, he's not going to throw them in. Oh, that stinks. You see what I'm saying, though, dude? That's why I asked you three weeks ago. I said, send the fender wells. I need them. Roger that. I will head to uh, FedEx right uh -huh. now to see if they can ship those. I don't know if they carry a box big enough. Okay. But, uh, well, I'm whatever you got to do, bro, listen to me. Whatever you got to do, you got to get those over here, and they got to be your ASAP because he wants your car tomorrow. Roger that. I'll talk to him. I'll talk to him and tell him the situation, but he's a businessman, not like me. He's not a, uh, you know, my friend Pete, Okay. So, I mean, he's like, you know, that's not my problem type guy. That's how he acts. Understandable. Okay, so listen to me, GTO Jimmy guy. Do what I ask you to do to get the stuff here so I can restore your car. Right that. I'll get right on it, good sir. Okay, I'd really appreciate it, buddy. Okay? Absolutely. Thank you. I got to go, bud. I got to go. So what the deal is, is I've been waiting around for this, that, and the other. Now all of a sudden we're waiting on fender wells that we don't have. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Body shop girl person. What should I do? Should I stall out on the car and tell Steve, well, we can't do it now. we got to wait on parts? No. So get the yeah, car so done. You should just buy brand new ones. I mean, it's a GTO. You can buy brand new well, ones. Well, we can't car. use, we don't want brand new inner fender wells. We want the factory original ones that he's got because they bolt on there. Well, then I guess he'll have to pay a little extra. He's going to have to pay extra. It's not my problem. It's not my fault. I got to do what I got to do. Right, I'm just saying, this is very stressful. I want to get this car out of my shop. No, it's only stressful if you make it. The only way I can get the car out of my shop is I got to have the owner cooperate. Did you see how he just ignored me? Just completely ran. When the owner doesn't cooperate, the car stays in my shop longer and becomes a storage unit. Stop, Pete. Now, we got to get this door off. Go ahead, put the camera down. Let's get this done. Okay, we're getting the uh, GTO loaded up. Uh, we're taking it over to Sandblaster guy's place. Uh, he's going to go ahead and blast the firewall door jams underneath the car, possibly the dashboard, package tray around the windows, and uh, stuff like that. Now, once again, we did strip this by hand. Uh, it's been stripped by hand, chemical stripping. That's the only way to go when you're doing a classic car. Let's get this thing loaded and Hopefully, our buddy, Mr. California, GTO Jimmy guy, sent the parts that we need to get this thing finished. Because, see, that's the deal. That's what holds stuff up, is when the owner isn't cooperating properly. 
So hopefully he got those sent out like he was supposed to do three weeks ago and uh, Sandblaster guy won't charge him extra when he gets here. But if he does, then I mean, there's nothing I can do, nothing. Okay, we got the car loaded. We're ready to go over to Sandbox, guys. When we get over there, we'll see what's going to happen. Once again, uh, we're trying to do the best we can with what we got. Um, when owners don't cooperate, shit doesn't get done, and I don't like that. If this turns out to be a storage unit car, owner guy can come get it. This is not a storage unit facility. So he better remember that when I tell him I need stuff. All right, I need these parts. I need that. So I hope everybody got that situation there. Uh, you're not working. I'm not working on my dime and your time. You're working. I'm working on uh, my time and your dime. All right, you're paying me. All right, not to store your car, to fix your car. Let's get her done and do it right. That's all I'm asking, sir. That's all I'm asking. So before we go over to Sandblaster guy's house, uh, we got to dismantle this mess right here because this is going to get sandblasted. This is the factory original core support, and I think it's actually still good. So I'm going to go ahead and dismantle this and get it all done. Of course, all this is done. Shit in the trash. Shit. It's total trash here, people. Okay, the grill. The grill's good. The grill's good. The rest of it's junk. Total, total trash. Let me get this done and I'll meet you over there at the blaster guy's house and see what he thinks about it. And hopefully we'll get a few angles of him actually blasting the car. Maybe, possibly, hopefully. Uh, okay, so here we are. Uh, we dropped the car off yesterday. Uh, we got Sam Blaster Steve guy over here in Moab. And I want everybody to look at this. He did a beautiful job underneath the car. Beautiful job. Look at that. Uh, it looks awesome. He took every piece of spec speculation of scrap, crap, um, any kind of gunk, grease, rot. It is gone. That's a, a awesome job that he did to the bottom. And uh, he also got the fender wells as well. Go ahead and get a look at that. There you go. And I had him go ahead and do the bottom, the rockers. Uh, we didn't uh, get all the paint off them. I don't want them rockers to be really, really clean. So I guess Steve over here, Sandblaster guy, Steve, what are you going to do next, buddy? Uh, what are we doing? We're going to do a firewall? Do the firewall. Okay, you're going to get the firewall done. Now, how's that paint coming off? Pretty nice, or? Yeah, it's coming off pretty all nice. All right, all right. Now, have you done any of the factory paint yet? Yes. I don't know if this is, this might even be factory. I don't know. I think that's right. Yeah, so how did the paint come off on the factory action? They come off good. Okay, yeah, so we're not getting any warpage or nothing like that. Nope. Now on your machine here, are you using water with this or are you doing it dry? Water. Okay, yeah. so you are using water and... All right, so you're doing water and sand together. Now you were telling me this isn't really sand though, this is glass. Yeah, this is... Yeah, this is uh, crushed beer bottles and stuff like that. Is that right? Whiskey yeah. bottles and yeah, any, any, okay. glass bottle. any type of glass bottle they can find. And now, how how many bags would you use on a job like this, sandblaster guy? Well, I've used eight bags on the bottom. Eight bags on the bottom. 
Well, yeah. probably. I still got some in the pod, so. Okay, maybe. so about seven and a half. Yeah, maybe. Okay, so you got seven and a half on the bottom, so you're going to use about 14 bags on this bitch. Mm, yeah. Maybe. Probably with all the. Yeah, because we still got to get the door jams. I see you already got this. That looks nice. The bottom. Uh, you're not running into any rust pits, are you? No. No rust at all? I think there were some rust pinholes on the rocker. Firewall? On the rocker. Pinhole. Rocker? Okay, we got to check that out. I'll do that later. Yeah. All right, well, um, what are we going to do? You say you're going to do the firewall next. Now, what's the action on this little stuff over here? What do you do on this stuff, bud? Um, I clamp it to these. Okay, these are your sandblast tables, I presume. Yeah. All right, so what do you do with that? How do you do this? Um, I just use a clamp and I clamp the okay. small stuff so it doesn't blow it because it'll yeah. blow it away. That, that'd actually blow that thing off the table, wouldn't it? No, not that. Okay, no. you're talking like that little stuff yeah, over there. Okay. Alright, now this here is the original core support and I see a lot of surface rust on a sand blaster. Is that going to clean up nice? Yeah. Because oh, yeah. it is solid. I don't see any rotten rust on it. Yeah, yeah we're trying to use this again. Um, so, you know, we need to get that really good, and I trust that you're going to. On the deck lid itself, we're not doing the outside. We're only going to do the inside. Now, look what I just found here. What are you thinking of that, Sandblaster guy? Maybe. Do you think that'll clean up? or? Yeah, that'll clean up. Yeah. Clean okay, up. let's be real careful wherever. Yeah, be careful around there. We don't want to create bigger holes than we already got. Yeah. Usually it won't it won't take out. It won't take any more metal out. Okay. It'll just, a little it'll just bit. clean it out. Yeah, it'll All clean right. it out. Okay, no problem, buddy. All right, well, let's get to work. My friend Pete's got to go back to work. And uh, what do we got here? About another day and a half worth of work? Or? I probably have about, about another day or four so. hours more. Oh, that's all? Wow. You're pretty fast and efficient with that, I can tell you that. Now, what's this hose for? Um, the big that's to rinse after I put it on Okay. with the rust inhibitor and the rinse. Now, there's some kind of chemical that you spray on that. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, what is that stuff, dude? It's a rust inhibitor. Okay, now what is actually does that do? It's called hold tight. No yeah. rust, no salt, no one-step job. Yeah, it just okay. uh, it just huh. when you're using the water, uh -huh. it helps keep from rusting. Okay, okay. It won't prevent rust, but it'll. But it'll hold it back long enough for you to get it going yeah. and yeah. get it uh, prepped and painted. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. And you already use that on the bottom, I guess. Yeah. Okay, bud. Let's get her going. Now this is diesel, right? Okay, and that's actually, is that how it runs? That's quiet. Yeah. Wow. It'll kick up when you uh -huh. pressure. Now, what's the pressure that you're using on this particular job? On the bottom, I used uh, 100 PSI. Uh-huh. Probably the firewall, I'll use 80. Okay, what about that uh, dash? Probably that's drop it thin. down a little bit. Drop down about 60 or something? Yeah, I'll drop okay. it down and move back. All right, all right, buddy, we're going to stand back here while you get to work. Okay, bud. Good job. Good job, Steve. You know, it's a real shame that the owner didn't listen to my friend Pete and do exactly what I wanted him to do, because I told him to get everything over here. So now, Sandblaster guy says, well, it's going to be an extra charge because I got to start my machine up, I got to clean the machine out, I got to fill it back up, blah, 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 blah. I mean, you got to understand, if you're not listening to me when I'm restoring your car, you're the one that's going to pay for it, not me. So Steve actually is located right here in Moab, Utah and travels all over uh, the western slope. So if you're in this area of the western slope of Colorado or Utah or in the Four Corner area, give Steve a call. Um, he does travel with this machine and he is a sandblaster. Now he does do other media. Uh, he did a Corvette for me that we used uh, walnut shells on. We had a walnut shell blasted and it worked out very well. Once again, he did not do the whole car. Uh, me and Minnie actually stripped that car by hand, all the sheet metal on the outside, and the only thing that he's sandblasting is parts that are not on the outside of the vehicle, if you can get my drift. We will not be sandblasting the whole inside of the car. Uh, we're just doing sections of the vehicle and go from there. Okay, as you see, he is using water blasting. This is called dustless blasting. And unlike the character that did the Camaro at my shop in Dallas, Steve actually knows what he's doing and doing it right. You can see the paint coming off very nicely 
and accurately as he's blasting it away. And you don't see all that haze. Let me get the camera. There you go. You don't see all the haze and the smoke in the air. Uh, so he knows how to do this properly. It looks like the paint is being removed nicely. I like it, and it's working out great. Just got done sanding all of the blasted parts of the vehicle. And when I say sand, we took 80 grit and we got rid of all the roughness on it. That's very important to do that. Um, most of what you're looking at is going to be painted in epoxy primer. And that includes the deck lid, uh, backside of the deck lid, all these little pieces that you see hanging up here. These are going to be in epoxy primer. We're not painting those. And then we went ahead and got the door jams blasted. You can see how clean those came out along with the hinges. I went ahead and had the dash blasted. Uh, we're going to go ahead and epoxy prime that. And then I had the back window sills, uh, which you see right here, those are blasted as well. So we'll go ahead and um, epoxy prime those. I went ahead and had him. So, uh, blast this right here to get all that gunk and crap out. Uh, we'll go ahead and epoxy prime that. And then we got the trunk gap here, uh, the trunk lift where the rubber goes. Uh, he blasted that. And then I had him also blast this right here. Uh, it was very uh, rough and ugly and we couldn't get all the paint out so he blasted that and then we're going to go epoxy prime that as well. So our 67 GTO restoration is coming along really, really nice. Um, it's kind of a good day today. Uh, what I'll do is I'll get the firewall and underneath the car painted black. And then tomorrow, I'll go ahead and paint the core support over here. You can see that on the back wall. And then we got Guy outside sanding. Um, he's actually sanding the fender wells and some other parts. And he needs to get his shit together because I've already got the epoxy primer mixed. It's activated. It's ready to go. He's got a piece out there that I need to get done now. Okay, guy, I've been standing there for 20 minutes waiting on you. How are we looking over here? I'm done. Just let me shot. see it. Let me see. Take a look at that. Okay. You want the backside to Okay, that looks pretty good. Let me get in there and get that done. I need you to get on those fender wells now. All right. Inside and out. All right. We got to get those painted tomorrow, so let's get her done.